Am I audible? Yes. Christos Anesti. Okay. Um, I'm very honored and grateful and humbled to be uh, invited to this beautiful colloquium. Um, among the uh, such among such uh, illustrious Maximian scholars among whom I'm neither, neither the first nor the last, since I'm not a Maximian scholar at all, nor am I a, part, a patristic scholar. So um, I am a, hope to be, aspire to be a liturgical scholar. I work in, as uh, Professor Blowers mentioned in his introduction, work on uh, liturgical history, uh, particularly Byzantine liturgical history, as well as that of the Church of Jerusalem. Thank you. So uh, this paper, um, uh, this paper concerns uh, the uh, does is not a theological paper, so it may kind of stand out uh, like a, for better or for worse, probably for worse. Among other papers, uh, it's not it's not a theological paper. It's a um, uh, it's an attempt to discern the question whether uh, we can uh, speak of a liturgical order, liturgical rite in Maximus' mystagogy. Um, <clears throat> and whether it's appropriate, as some liturgical scholars do, many liturgical scholars do, to uh, use uh, Maximus' commentary uh, seminal liturgical commentary, which is the subject of his excellent colloquium, um, as a uh, liturgical source, as a source for liturgical history. Uh, the influence of that, uh, of this text, is without, in the Byzantine tradition, is without any question. Um, just an example is one of the later reductions of an influential 8th century liturgical commentary. Um, in the known in under Latin name Historia Mystica Ecclesiastica and usually attributed to Sude Germanus, so usually known as Germanus's commentary. Um, the its authorship has been questioned recently, um, not thoroughly, very successfully, but it was questioned, so hence it's, I said, uh, Sude Germanus. Um, so this commentary, one later reductions of this text, substituted fragments of an earlier uh, recension of uh, Historia Mystica Ecclesiastica um, with wholesale passages uh, from chapters 20-21 of Mystagogy in an attempt, as has been suggested, uh, to bolster the doctrinal, um, uh, doctrinal orthodoxy of the uh, original recension. Uh, the unquestionable presence of the mystagogy in Byzantine Orthodox tradition leaves no doubt to many that the order of the Eucharistic liturgy described in, the com in this commentary uh, fully corresponds, or at least mostly corresponds, to the Eucharistic formulary of the Constantinopolitan tradition. Thus, René Bournier, the author of still unsurpassed study of the Byzantine liturgical com survey of the Byzantine liturgical commentaries assumes that the liturgical rite underlying Maximus's mystagogy corresponds to the state of the development of uh, Byzantine liturgy in the beginning of seventh century. Uh, however, does this uh, question is, does this assumption fully stand in view of the more recent studies concerning the history of the Byzantine liturgy in the last quarter of the first millennium? Um, in the course of his work, uh, Maximus alludes to and interprets specific actions of the, as we all know, of the Eucharistic liturgy, indicating those with rather generic terms. He, uh, as we all know, we read the commentary, he goes about three or four times through the sequence of liturgical actions, interpreting them each time, uh, calling these specific components of the liturgy in rather generic terms. First entrance, readings, songs, pronouncement of peace, gospel, entrance of the mystery, the thrice holy, um, uh, the incipit of the uh, uh, of the uh, uh, hymn, uh, one is holy, one is Lord uh, Jesus Christ, and uh, holy communion. Uh, unlike the Eucharistic liturgy underlying the third chapter of Dionysius' ecclesiastical hierarchy, which can be identified based on 
evidence also in the rest of the corpus, um, as uh, early fifth century forum of Syro Antiochian or Syro Palestinian rite, um, the specific province of the rite Maximus exegetes is harder to discern. At the same time, in accordance with the structure of his commentary, Maximus provides the symbolic exegesis of this element of the rite several times, as I, as I said, somewhat altering the phrasing, but nevertheless consistently describing the components of the same order. So um, uh, again, uh, entrance of the bishop, entrance of the, of the people, bishops are sent to the throne, scripture readings, um, uh, psalmody between the readings, um, uh, 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 peace between the readings, greeting of peace between the readings, reading of the gospel, bishops descend from the throne, dismissal of the catechumens, closing of the doors of the church, entrance of the mysteries, keys of peace, uh, the creed, uh, the Lord's prayer, one is holy and communion. Occasionally the order of liturgical actions may be slightly reorganized. Uh, for example, in chapter 12, uh, Maximus discusses the greeting of peace after dealing with scripture readings and the hymnody, uh, but makes clear that this exclamation, peace beyond to all, comes at each reading. So each, read, each of the readings, however um, many there are, uh, is preceded by the greeting of peace. Likewise, it is open uh, to interpretation whether the divine songs Maximus mentions uh, precede each of the readings or uh, are positioned uh, between the readings. Certain liturgical actions quite prominent in other liturgical commentaries receive less attention in the mystagogy, uh, as already been alluded and mentioned, holy anaphora, which is the most distinctive characteristic feature of a liturgical, specific liturgical tradition or a family, um, is not uh, mentioned, rather it's um, reduced to only one of the component, that is the, the Trisagion uh, or Thrice Holy Hymn, or which is a reference to the Sanctus of Isaiah 6, the biblical Sanctus. Um, <clears throat> and, um, uh, so only Sanctus becomes the subject of Maximus' exegesis. Conversely, some actions that receive attention in Maximus' commentary, the bishops are sent to the front, for example, bishops are to and descend from the throne, or closing of the doors, are not consistently accompanied by prayer or hymnody in the extant liturgical orders, uh, which problematizes the answer to the question, which is, what is the liturgy under, uh, underlying Maximus' commentary? Furthermore, the state of our knowledge concerning the 7th century Christian liturgies in the Eastern Mediterranean um, further complicates the puzzle. We certainly assume that the worship in the imperial capital of Constantinople centered upon the Cathedral of Hagia Sophia, and that the formularies of the Eucharistic liturgy that were used in Hagia Sophia were most likely that of St. Basil and St. John Chrysostom, in that order, uh, with St. Basil's liturgy occupying a more prominent place between the two uh, until the reversal of the, I think they flipped in around the ninth or 10th century. And we can discern that from the evidence of liturgical manuscripts when they change, when these two liturgies change places. An early form of the Byzantine presanctified liturgy likewise was already celebrated as one of the Eucharistic rites, already at probably early seventh century, if not late sixth, being accompanied by the appropriate chants. The earliest Byzantine Ephologion remains the late 8th century Ephologion Barberini Greek 336, at least partially reflecting the liturgical tradition of the pre-iconoclastic Church of Constantinople. However, the evidence regarding stational processions in Constantinople through liturgical year, the forum of the cathedral rite in Constantinople, as well as the text of the Byzantine lectionary dates to the post-iconoclast uh, period. And our reconstruction of the 7th century liturgy in Constantinople would be based on the assumption that the rite celebrated before iconoclasm, uh, should I speak louder? Or? Okay. <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> the, the celebrated before iconoclasm continued to be celebrated after 8th century. For the sake of comparison, it should be likewise noted that a knowledge regarding another little uh, major uh, Eastern Christian tradition uh, relevant to uh, the life of Maximus. Um, that is a <clears throat> major Eastern, non-Byzantine, but Chalcedonian liturgical tradition, 
uh, that is the tradition of the holy city of Jerusalem. So our knowledge regarding this tradition is likewise fragmentary in nature and in need of even um, uh, more uh, intense efforts of reconstruction. The full corpus of the ancient hymnography uh, of Jerusalem tradition, um, most likely, <clears throat> which most likely was used in the Church of Jerusalem and Jerusalem Patriarchate in the seventh century, including the monasteries, uh, has survived only in Old Georgian translation. Only two Georgian, Old Georgian manuscripts preserve the Hagiopolite rite of baptism, distinct from the Byzantine. Uh, and no Greek manuscripts has preserved the complete text of the pre-sanctified liturgy as celebrated according to the rite of Jerusalem. Furthermore, the main Eucharistic liturgy uh, of the Jerusalem church until about 11th, 12th century, the so-called liturgy of St. James, survives in about 40 Greek and a number of old Georgian manuscripts dating from the eighth, which is rather fragmentary, to the 15th century. Uh, due to a number of archaic readings, uh, the Georgian translation of St. James's liturgy is often thought as representing an earlier reduction of this liturgy, dating to 6th, 7th century, even though, again, that this dating should, not be used, uh, should be used with, with caution and not indiscriminately. Already in the early manuscripts of St. James, one could discern the traces of Byzantine influence, but the reverse cross-pollination, that is the influence of St. James on um, uh, the Byzantine liturgy, uh, is also evident in some prayers uh, that entered the Byzantine liturgy under the, after in the post-iconoclast period. Thus, any attempts to discern liturgical allusions in St. Maximus's mystagogy to mold them into a reliable description of a liturgical rite to compare this order with the structures of the Constantinople or Jerusalem liturgy if, is, is fraught with certain risks and possible anachronisms. Um, nevertheless, in comparing the order of liturgy in Maximus with that with what we know concerning the shape of the Byzantine and, and Jerusalem liturgies around the 9th, 10th century, um, uh, one doesn't discern similarities, uh, but very few details that can definitively assign the liturgical rite of the mystagogy to one or another uh, locality. I want to probably flip to another, if it would be possible, maybe. Okay, so this is the actually the, um, the table on the left, uh, on the right, forgive me, uh, which actually uh, presents the comparison. And it is also, also evident uh, how many elements are common, uh, actually, yeah, uh, are common, uh, how many elements, uh, yeah, could we get that back, okay. Um, <laughs> am I do okay. Um, okay, that's fine. Um, so how many, uh, that there are a number of elements that are, are common across traditions. Some elements that are not mentioned, like descent from the throne, uh, which mentioned by Maximus, but is not mentioned uh, in the existing orders of uh, Liturgy of Chrysostom and Basil or Liturgy of St. James. Um, uh, the uh, uh, certain elements which are specific to St. James that they are not mentioned uh, by, uh, 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 they're not mentioned by Maximus, uh, but uh, certain elements which are present in Maximus's mystagogy is present in both uh, of these uh, liturgies, uh, or lit all of these liturgical orders. So, uh, in 2006, uh, Joseph Patrick, uh, but professor of archaeology at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem in Jerusalem, attempted for the first time to question the usual association of the liturgy in Maximus's commentary with the liturgy of Constantinople. In his article analyzing the evidence regarding the procession of the transfer of the gifts, that is great entrance, in the churches of Palestine, uh, Patrick draws the evidence from the so-called Syriac Life of Maximus, a treatise uh, written from the uh, pro um, Myophysite position by certain uh, George or Gregory of Reshina, uh, a hostile contemporary of the saint. 
Um, the evidence derived from this nar narrative, as, uh, as we know, has received a, a significant uh, traction in recent scholarship, uh, attempting to revise the accepted chronology of Maximus's early life. By accepting the uh, data of the Syriac life regarding Maximus's uh, upbringing in the Palestinian monastic milieu. On the basis of the data of the Syriac life, Patrick also asserted that since he was a Palestinian monk, um, uh, and um, the right, consequently the right exegeted by the saint in his commentary must be an Episcopal liturgy of Jerusalem rather than of Constantinople, rather than that of Constantinople, excuse me. However, the order of liturgy that Patrick discerns in the commentary, already mentioned, does not, again, include any distinctive characteristics which would have definitively set this structure apart as Palestinian and not Constantinopolitan. Uh, Patrick's attempt to question the Constantinopolitan providence, provenance of the liturgy in the mystagogy received a strong rebuttal from the late great Byzantine liturgiologist Robert Taft, who endeavored to put the case of for Constantinople on a more solid foundation. And uh, Taft noted Maximus's clear distinction, at least uh, in the beginning, in the, well, not in the beginning, but in the first time he goes through the um, uh, actions of the liturgy, between the, the entrance of the bishop with the clergy, termed the first entrance, and the entrance of the people, and argued that in the second half of the first millennium, the first entrance of the divine liturgy in the Jerusalem Patriarchate was the entrance of the clergy alone and not of the people and as there is uh, no evidence to the contrary. At the same time, there is ample evidence that the entrance of the people together with clergy was customary for Hagia Sophia uh, in Constantinople, um, uh, which uh, still, in the, um, even in post-iconoclastic period, retained components of its stational liturgy. Secondly, according to Taft, Maximus does not allude to any liturgical components that would be specific to the Jerusalem liturgy of St. James, specifically the chants, um, uh, hymnographic com compositions that constituted this transition, uh, the transition uh, from liturgy of the word to Eucharistic liturgy proper. So, but it's again, it uh, falls into the argument of, uh, from silence. Um, <clears throat> uh, the uh, uh, structure of Liturgy of St. James uh, has a peculiar characteristic, at least in its uh, original form, where instead of one hymn between uh, the Liturgy of the Word and Liturgy of the Eucharist, there were two hymns separated by diaconal acclamation expelling the catechumens from the, from the church. Um, so we don't uh, have that, uh, uh, we, we, uh, there is no allusion for that in Maximus. So um, uh, furthermore, finally, a strong argument in favor of the Byzantine liturgy underlying Maximus' commentary is the relative position of the keys of peace and the creed. Maximus interprets these elements four times in the mystagogy, and wherever, whenever described, there are always in, they are always in the same order, keys of peace followed by the creed. By comparison, the manuscripts of liturgy of St. James uh, are likewise very consistently place the keys of peace first, uh, or keep, uh, place a, a keys of peace after the creed and not before, like in the uh, Byzantine liturgy. Um, uh, Taft argued that uh, this still allows scholars to retain Maximus's commentary as a witness to the early seventh century Byzantine li Eucharistic liturgy. What I would comment on, on this issue is that regarding the absence of the entry of the people in the Jerusalem liturgy, Taft chooses to dismiss the internal evidence of the entrance prayer in the liturgy of St. James. Can I have a um, so next slide? I think it will take me longer to flip the page. Um, uh, yeah, maybe, but yeah, this one. So the, uh, the prayer, uh, there are actually in the liturgy of St. James, there are several allusions to the entrance uh, of the clergy, and the prayer of the entrance does allude to the entrance of the entire church um, into the building. Uh, Taft is aware of that, of that prayer, uh, but he chooses to um, essentially to uh, treat it as a 
um, is this evidence as not um, necessarily to be taken literally. Um, so the absence of the clear evidence for people's entrance may be another argument from silence. So explicit mention of the entrance of the clergy may be a sign of the disintegration of the original entrance of the clergy and the people rather than a sign of the absence of such entrance whatsoever. At the same time, the order of the in which keys of peace versus the creed seems to be a very strong argument in favor of the Byzantine provenance of the liturgy that Maximus describes, so that they exactly appear in this, exactly in the same order. However, Maximus' mention of the closing of the doors after the reading of the gospel does not find correspondence in the Byzantine liturgy. Rather, the dismissal of the catechumens and the closing of the doors uh, in, uh, at the, appear at the same time in the liturgy of St. James although admittedly in later manuscripts. So um, uh, the evidence, therefore, um, the evidence still uh, leans in the direction of the right of Constantinople. Um, however, um, overall corpus of Ma Maximian liturgical references presents a rather ambiguous picture. The two uh, passages which I don't have time to go into uh, they uh, uh, allude to liturgical practices which attested, uh, for example, the use of uneven number of loaves for the Eucharist and uh, the uh, consecration, uh, anointing at the consecration of churches. They uh, are char characteristics uh, both for Constantinopolitan and for the Jerusalem tradition. Um, and um, uh, ultimately, the structural components of the liturgical rite represented in Maximus's mystagogy uh, firmly uh, place the liturgy he interprets within the realm of Eastern liturgical families. But there is still not a lot of evidence that would allow us to say definitively to which Eastern Christian liturgical tradition does this liturgical order belongs. The generic and common elements that constitute the shape of the liturgy in a mystagogy make it rather possible to use as a guide to liturgical exegesis across liturgical traditions. And um, Maximus's theological vision here is primary and liturgical, his, liturgical historical aspects of the commentary are secondary to his vision. Hence, I'm questioning the methodology of using uh, Maximus um, for kind of mining the text, patristic text, uh, Maximus's text for um, uh, com liturg allusions to the litur to liturgical rites, uh, thus disassociated, uh, disassociating them um, from um, the overall context of Maximus's uh, commentary, since the order in sequence Iremos ketaxis, as Maximus uh, says, that in which these elements are presented are necessitated by theological vision uh, rather than by his desire to describe uh, Eucharistic liturgy, which is not his goal uh, in the commentary thing. Uh, moreover, so and thus the attempts to isolate and decontextualize the components of liturgical rite from the text of the commentary may distract us from Maximus's liturgical vision and his liturgical theology to see the meaning of the liturgical rites in relation and in continuity with the economy of salvation work, worked by God in Christ and through Christ in his church for our transformation and deification. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.